Hello everyone and welcome to this webinar on miscarriage. And wherever you are calling in from, um, I would um, love to know where you're from. Uh, we have a lot that are in from um, the US, so good evening to you. And for the Australians um, and New Zealanders or wherever else you are, uh, welcome. So today we are going to talk about the reasons people miscarry. And the statistics really are quite alarming. And that's why I really wanted to do this webinar to talk to as many of you as possible to try and help you understand why you may be getting um, miscarriages along the way in your attempt to fall pregnant. So my name is Carolyn Ladowski. For those of you that have not met me or you haven't seen any of my webinars before, my, I started MTH Vice Support Australia uh, 10 years ago now. And my whole goal really was to understand why people with the MTHFR gene had all these symptoms that other people didn't have. They were getting more miscarriages, they were more prone to anxiety and depression, they were getting sick more often, and um, you know, there was a lot of, um, a lot of issues that we could see um, you know, across the board. Now, um, I just wanna make sure everyone can hear me okay. We will be taking questions at the end. If there's any questions along the way, as you think of them, just pop them into the Q&A box and we'll come back, back to those at the end. So getting back to how I got into this, really it was because I'm a firm believer if you analyze bloods and you have a look at what is going on biochemically, you can really start to understand why some people get sick and others don't. And my, I saw that a vast majority of my MTHFR patients had miscarriages in their family history. So whether it was their mum, grandmother, aunts, um, cousins, whatever, I started to see that there was a bit, of, a bit of a pattern. And it's been one of my missions, one of my passions, to really try and get the word out and explain to people that you shouldn't be having miscarriages. So, this is what we are going to learn today. We are going to look at the key reasons for miscarriages. We're going to have a look at what the impact of the MTHFR gene might have on your fertility. We're going to have a look at folate levels and the forms of folate. And for those of you that are having miscarriages, most of you, it will be due to the fact that you have lower folate than you should. And or your partner. Now let's not forget that the male will donate 50% of his DNA and 50% of yours and that is what forms the fetus. So research shows us and we'll get into this in a little bit but even if you have half, um, you know, even if your partner has the MTH5 gene and you don't, you are going to be more at risk of having a miscarriage. Okay, so that's really important for you to remember. And we're going to look at the key steps that you need to take to minimize your risk. Now, just um, put into the chat box or the Q&A box, just make sure everyone can hear me because I can see a few hands going up. Um, just make sure that you are not having issues. So can someone just say that they can hear me? Um, just put it into the chat and just say that everything is right audio wise. Yes, great. Thanks, Amy. Thanks, Emma, Gina. Great. Fantastic. Lovely to see you all here. All right. So let's continue. So one of the things that, as I said in the very beginning, my, my overall goal is to reduce the number of miscarriages worldwide. Now, I know that sound, might sound like a crazy goal, but if my theory is, if I can empower you to really understand what the doctors and the specialists don't know, then that is going to almost proof you so that you can prepare for pregnancy the right way and you can minimize your risk. And that is my key goal. 
and considering the number of people that um, you know have a miscarriage, 25% of all pregnancies end in a miscarriage. Now that's huge statistics, one in four. So the amount of women that this is, or an amount of couples that this is affecting worldwide is crazy. The infertility rates are on the incline and I, I do have a theory about, you know, the multitude of causes um, and around 15% of couples or 70 million couples are affected by infertility, 70 million. Now I've been doing webinars for pretty well 10 years and I can tell you that you are not alone if you have been having miscarriages because the vast majority of people that I see in clinic are those couples who have had multiple um, miscarriages along the way. Many of them are pushed into IVF um, when you, you know, when someone has a miscarriage or they can't conceive or they've got unexplained infertility, they're just pushed willy nilly into IVF. And is that necessarily the answer? No, I don't think it is because the success rate with IVF really is not that great. So I want to make sure that you know, stay online because we're going to do a Q&A at the end. And I'm also going to give you access to information that isn't available anywhere else. And we'll have a special bonus for those at the end of this presentation. Now, let me just, I just want, would like to share this case history with you because it is pretty typical of the couples that I see in the clinic. So Jenny was 36. Yeah, she's not, not necessarily young. She's 36. She had multiple miscarriages and they were most often before 12 weeks. And that's fairly common because, you know, when you have disturbed DNA, you don't have enough folate, then really the most of miscarriages will happen in that first trimester. She had IVF um, for most of the, um, the fertility treatments she'd had. And she had been seeing naturopaths. She was on multitude of formulas. I think the very first appointment I saw her, she and her husband put the formulas that she was on and I've got to say, there were probably about 100 bottles on that table. But they clearly weren't working because she was falling pregnant okay, but she just wasn't keeping the babies. And when I'd seen her, she had already had three. Her husband was also on multiple formulas. Um, and the day that I saw them both, I literally took her off everything and put her on three things. We refined the diet. We really worked on balancing the key nutrients because she didn't know that she actually had a deficiency in not only folate, but a lot of other nutrients. And that was affecting her ability to stay pregnant. I actually put her on 10 times the amount of folate that she was on, 10 times. And this is the thing that I think is really lacking in terms of information out there from doctors and IVF specialists they do not understand that the level of folate has, in some cases, has to be 10 times what um, you would normally put someone on, particularly if they're homozygous for the MTHFR or they've got low folate. So these are some of the things that are really important. So we put her on all the, the, my formulas that I wanted her to be on. And funnily enough, she fell pregnant quite quickly. The problem was though, she'd gone, she'd already had this IVF appointment. I could not convince her to not have it. And unfortunately she'd used old eggs. And so she literally within about four weeks, she miscarried again. And I can't say that I was really hugely upset because I just didn't want her using old eggs. I knew that there was a very high chance that she, um, she would actually fall pregnant. So uh, that she would have a miscarriage. So I, as I said there, I, I secretly, I was actually quite relieved. So we started again, no old eggs, advised her to start egg collection again in four months time because I really like to have a four month preconception period. Why? Because your eggs have a 120 day life cycle. So what you do today 
will not completely change the nutrition of your cells for 120 days. For men, it's 90 days, but for you, it's 120 days. So that's really crucially important. So there's little Jack, he's the first boy. She then went on um, a year ago to have a daughter and we are now preparing her for her third. She has had no complications. In fact, she feels better than she has ever felt before. Her pregnancies were fantastic. Admittedly, there was a bit of anxiety, which you could um, understand because she'd had by this stage um, four miscarriages previously, but she is so healthy and mentally feels better than she ever has. So that's a really good story um, because, as you can see, there was no IVF. She, although she had it booked for four months, she didn't actually ever go because she fell pregnant naturally before she went. So now she's 48, 38 and she had her second and now she's going in to um, have the next one within the next year and she'll be 39, 40. So it just goes to show if you prepare the right way, your chances of success are m much greater and your chances of miscarriage are minimised significantly. And she sent me this note to say a very special thank you for all your guidance and support in helping us create a beautiful, healthy baby. Beyond that, you have helped us every day through improved well-being and I had a dream pregnancy. We call the methylfolate our happy tablets. We admire your scientific approach that's specific to individuals and your passion for sharing and challenging the status quo. Thank you very much. And the reason she says challenging the status quo because very few, if any, people believe and, and probably many of you will have already spoken to your doctor. You might know about MTHFR and a lot of them will turn around and say, it doesn't matter. So I'm here to tell you that it does. So some of the issues that you know you might be experiencing, hormonal imbalances, um, without enough folate, I, I honestly believe that your hormones are lower than they should be. We tend to see a lower progesterone, um, higher amounts of estrogen in the system, so almost like an estrogen dominance type can condition um, where you might have fibrocystic breasts, fibrocystic ovaries, etc. Ovulation, not that great. Um, low healthy cervical fluid. Endometrium, not really that healthy, healthy because progesterone levels tend to be low and so implantation is a lot more difficult. Not enough follicles and as I said, multiple miscarriage is a very, very common issue. So why? What causes it? Well, we have genes that affect the proper clearing of hormones, allowing estrogen to build up, number one. Without an adequate folate, what we call our methylation cycle is not working optimally. And that's what really looks after your hormones. It looks after the liver function, the clearing of um, toxic estrogens that we don't want. The higher the estrogen, the less your progesterone will be. Lack of folate. Now, most people, when they're looking at um, preconception, they'll only look at the female and that's not the right approach because what your partner does is as important. And we absolutely have to know that if he genetically has a low folate that's going to affect his DNA, we have to make sure we make up for that. A lack of preparation time pre-pregnancy. So a lot of people think, oh, well, I'm ready to have a baby now. I'm just going to start trying. But what they haven't realized is there are so many things that affect our folate in everyday life. Number one, I think that the fact that we have folic acid fortification is actually, and I'm doing some research about this at the moment, but it looks like that the amount of fol folic acid that most people are getting through their diet is actually slowing down one of these enzymes that we need for active folate. That's a problem. We've got a lot more toxins in the diet and the poor sperm, they are very, very susceptible to oxidative stress. 
the sperm counts are going down. I, IVF um, is, you know, not necessarily the answer, particularly when you have bad quality sperm and eggs that have, are not optimized for the right nutrition. So nutrition is important. We need to look at the, the toxins that could potentially be affecting fertility. And I think thyroid issues too, and autoimmune disease is definitely on the rise. And um, that, that Jenny actually did have autoimmune and I gave her a special autoimmune um, formula to take pre-conception um, and during pregnancy to support um, the fetus growth. So a lack of folate, you would know by now that, you know, neural tubes, most women, the neural tube closes at, at about 21 days. Most women don't even know they're pregnant then. So if they don't have enough folate, you know, there can be issues with um, behavioral um, ADD, ADHD, low birth weight, autism, allergies, all of these things are incredibly important and, and folate is the key. And, you know, biochemically, any period of rapid growth increases the need for healthy DNA production. And there's nothing more important or more demanding of healthy DNA than pregnancy and the growth of that fetus. So if, if our DNA is largely governed by folate and the MTHFR gene, which creates active folate, then we can see how important this MTHFR gene is. So what is it? I don't know if any of you, you can pop into the chat box. Any of you know about the MTHFR gene? Do you actually have the MTHFR gene? Um, this is, uh, it stands for methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase. Essentially, Gina knows, yep, Gina, good. Um, essentially, it's a fancy word. Methyl tetrahydrofolate is a fancy word for active folate. Okay, that's, that's really what all it means. Um, Andy is homozygous and T. Grant is heterozygous for both. Kristen is heterozygous. Emma is homozygous. Amy, oh my goodness, Amy, both you and your husband are homozygous. So this is so relevant to you. All of you that are homozygous, this is the most important um, presentation you will ever listen to. And Amy, unfortunately, has lost four. Okay, so Amy, this is so important for you and, and any of you that are homozygous, this is the most important webinar you will ever listen to because it will start to put the pieces together for you. Andy, unfortunately, has lost one as well. So you can see just how relevant this is. And I best, oh, T. Grant has lost four. Oh, so sorry. And you've got your, um, you've got your DNC tomorrow. All right. So we, you, you need help in understanding what you need to do to stop this. And believe me, you can. And that's the most important thing. So MTHFR is affecting your active folate. Why? So here's your folate that you eat up here. And folic acid is what they supplement with, right? So all the foods in terms of, um, in terms of all the um, food that we eat, the bread, the pasta, the biscuits, anything in a packet pretty well has folic acid in it. And remember I said there was an enzyme that slowed down? Well, this one here, DHFR, dihydrofolate reductase, is the enzyme that slowed when you get too much folic acid in the system. Now, when you eat good leafy green veggies, comes in here and it's got to get converted all the way down here. And this one in red at the bottom, 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate is your active folate. And guess what? Your MTHFR gene sits right here. So you can see if for those of you that are homozygous, that is shut down by 70%. 70% of your active folate is not getting through the system. 
70%. And for those of you that got one copy, it's 30 to 35%. So it doesn't matter how much folic acid you're having. It doesn't matter how much folinic you're having. You have got to have methylfolate. And for those of you that are homozygous like Jenny was, you need a lot, lot more folate than you're taking. So what is methylation? Just a quick, so active folate supports methylation. And this on the side here is what we call a methyl group. And you can see that there's an open arm here. So this acts like an on off switch. It clamps onto things and makes them work your amino acids, your proteins, your enzyme. So fat metabolism, DNA, detoxification, processing hormones, making hormones, mental health, you know, sleep, all of these things need this little guy to attach. If it can't attach or there's not enough of them because you don't have enough folate, all those systems can be affected. The more stressed you are, the worse it will get. So that's incredibly important for you to remember. And when there's not enough methyls in the system, these are some of the things that we can see um, in people coming to our MTH fast support clinic. And you can see that that is not an exhaustive list, but it's a pretty big list of pretty big issues and pretty big conditions that really we need to be able to support. And you can see that there are many um, hormonal issues coming up here. Now, remember I said in the beginning that, hey, it's really important that you understand what your partner's MTHFR and folate levels are as well. And this is a good graph just to show you this. So let's say this is your partner, the one on the left, and this is you. And you've both got one copy of the MTHFR C677T. There is a 25% chance, one in four, of your baby being homozygous. Now, let's say we keep you just having one copy and your partner has two. All of a sudden, there's a 50% chance. Now, it's these bubbers who are homozygous if your folate or your partner's folate are low, these are the ones that are more likely to miscarry. So it's not good enough for just you to be taking your prenatal supplements. Your partner must take them as well. So that's really important. And I can't tell you the amount of, particularly in Australia, I don't know if it's the same um, in the US. I think they tend to be less macho and more um, likely to be taking a prenatal. But here in Australia, the guys go, I don't need it. Hey, it's got nothing to do with me. So unfortunately, we have this, you know, macho Aussie guy that doesn't want to take his pills. But let me tell you, he has to. So that's really important. And when it comes to female fertility, you know, when you're MTHFR, or if you have MTHFR, there's quite a big chance that your hip homocysteine levels can be elevated. And if they are, then that's associated with lower ovarian reserve, a diminished response to IVF, reduced chance of IVF, and egg death. So, and, and you know, there's then complications with egg development, and um, there's a lot of research about IVF and MTHFR. And for our male um, counterparts, the MTHFR gene and high homocysteine levels, that's a big truck going by, are associated with lower sperm count, higher DNA fragmentation, which means bad quality sperm. So they're not good quality. Reduced motility, which means they don't swim and they cannot reach the egg and a greater chance of infertility. So it affects males and females almost equally. And as we said, neural tube defects, autism, um, you know, these are particularly um, susceptible because of that neural tube closure at day 21 to 28. And most women don't even know. So what I wanted to do is take you through some of the research to show you, and particularly for those of you that have been to your doctors and your specialists and they say it doesn't matter, 
Well, here's some really good studies that you can quote and say, well, actually, there's quite a bit of research that shows that there, there is an effect. And this one in 2015 looked at the association between maternal and paternal, so mum and dad's MTHFR, both of them, the C677T and the A1298C, and the risk of recurrent pregnancy loss. And you can see in the conclusions, it says the results of the meta-analysis indicate that maternal and paternal 677T and A1298C are associated with recurrent pregnancy loss. But in this particular study, they found that the A1298C was quite significant in the association, which means they saw a lot more pregnancy loss from the A1298C than they did the C677T. Now, if you ask most specialists and most doctors, they'll go, oh, that doesn't matter. If you have the C677T, you might have elevated homocysteine, but the A1298C doesn't matter. Well, this research study says, well, in actual fact, it does. This study looked at mum's folate intake and the risk of cleft um, palate and the conclusion was children carrying the C677T variant, so remember the bubs, um, may have an increased risk of cleft lip and cleft palate. And it was significantly higher when the mums didn't use, they say folic acid, and this is one of the problems. Folic acid is not folate, but they use the term um, interchangeably. This particular study looked at folic acid and IVF. Now the standard protocol for IVF, if you're considered to be high risk, is to give you five milligrams, 5,000 micrograms of folic acid. And remember we just said folic acid isn't really what we should be using. So here we have this study that said high folic acid intake and MTHFR variations seem not to be associated, oops, clicked too soon, seem not to be associated with helping women achieve pregnancy during or after fertility. Of course it doesn't. They're using the wrong form of folate. So that makes sense. This study looked at MTHFR and again, recurrent spontaneous abortions in India. They noticed a high frequency of the MTHFR T allele with dad's side. The present study indicated the impact of dad's gene, C677T, was important when considering recurrent pregnancy loss. So again, it looks at, well, let's forget mum for a second, just look at dad. What if only dad has MTHFR? Well, they found that be, to be associated with recurrent pregnancy loss. This one looked at the A1298C and Down syndrome. And it said that it, re, it did see an association with a risk of Downs. But the great thing is, this all goes away when folate levels are good. And that's the most important thing that you need to remember is that if you finding out that you have the MTHFR gene is good, it's great, because now you know what you need to do to work around it. It's the best thing that ever happened because now you know and you'll be able to do something about it. This one looked at MTHFR and ovarian follicular activity. And it said A1298C was associated with higher FSH levels. So again, we're seeing the, the fact that this does affect our fertility. Folic acid and sperm. So remember we said that the standard protocol with IVF high risk is to give them five milligrams of folic acid. Well, that's exactly what they did in this study. They gave it to men who were considered to be high risk. They gave them five milligrams. And it says, these findings show that contrary to expectations, high dose folic acid supplementation result resulted in a loss of methylation across the sperm epigenome. Loss of, more, uh, loss of methylation was more prominent in those with C677T. They then go on to start say, well, we believe that this is causing behavioral problems in the offspring. So what we're learning more and more is 
Folic acid may not be the best form of folate for us. And just because we've always used it is not a reason to continue to do so. Here's another one of my patients. Catherine had had one child when she came to see me. She was in her 30s and was really desperate for another one. She'd actually tried for 10 years to fall pregnant with her first one. And she only did through countless IVF procedures. But she was actually told by the IVF clinic that she originally went to that was less than a 2% chance that she would ever fall pregnant even with IVF. So we found out that she had the MTHFR gene. We worked on her nutrients. We improved her folate. We reduced her stress in the process. We looked after her um, diet and she rang me. She moved to, um, the, moved to London and she said to me that she was actually um, going to try for IVF before she went. And I said to her, that's crazy. You don't want to do it before you go overseas. Wait till you're settled and then try um, with IVF. Anyway, she rang me about a month, two months after arriving back in London. And she said, guess what? I'm pregnant. And I said, oh, I didn't realize you've gone into IVF yet. And she said, no, I didn't. I actually fell pregnant naturally. So here's a woman who's told she's got no chance of falling pregnant. She's got no chance of IVF being successful or less than 2%. And yet she falls pregnant naturally, no IVF, when she's told there's no chance. So it really does make a big difference if you know and understand what you're working with. Anna is another patient of mine. She came to see me, but she didn't even know she had the MTHFR gene because she came to see me originally because she had thyroid issues. And so, you know, she was really good. We worked on a thyroid, got that all back under control. In the meantime, she said to me, I'm getting married um, this year and I want to try and fall pregnant straight away. So we put her on a six month actually preconception program because we had plenty of time and she got married and she came to me literally oh, probably about six weeks after her wedding and said, guess what? I'm pregnant. I fell pregnant first go. And I said, what do you mean first go? And she said, well, my husband's in the army and a week after we got married, he had to go off on a tour and I was pregnant. And she said, literally, I felt pregnant first go. So it does work. And the success is really quite amazing. Um, you know, just being able to um, put it all together. So what are the action steps that we want to take to minimize our miscarriage risk? Well, you definitely and your partner need to know if you have the MTHFR gene. The most important thing you've got to know. Now, don't think of it, as I said, as something negative. This is so positive because you know. So now you're going to know what steps you need to take to fix it. You need to know the form of folate that's right for you and you need to know the dose. And that's the million dollar question is the dose. You need to optimize the key nutrients that we need for pregnancy. So many of you won't be using your folate particularly well because you're low in B12. Does anyone ever tell you that? No. So if you don't have enough B12, you won't use that folate that's all important in fertility. You may have low zinc and B6, incredibly important for particularly B6 for your fertility. Choline, essential, absolutely essential for the brain of the baby and folate so crucial. And we need to balance your diet to make sure that many of you who have MTHFR, your detoxification capacity is going to be less than it should be. So even working on improving detoxification, and for those of you that have partners with MTHFR um, polymorphisms, they will need to work on the antioxidant support so that they improve the quality of the sperm because that is a really important thing to do. And as you know, there's so many nutrients that we need for a healthy pregnancy. And this is, well, these are some of them. So 
the things that I really want you to understand, and for those of you that you've written in and you've had multiple um, miscarriages, the things that you need to know is one, do you and your partner have the MTHFR gene and how the gene affects you and what sort of folate is going to be best for you. You also need blood tests and we need to know what nutrients need supporting, um, whether or not you're low in zinc, as I said, B6, B12, genetically you may have a problem with B12, which means we need to give you injections, supplements to take and at what dose. You need to know what's the best diet for you, how to prepare your home. Now, I know that sounds like a crazy thing, but I had um, a friend of mine who had 10 miscarriages, 10. And the problem was her home. So, and I've had quite a few patients too that do have issues with their home that we've had to fix that has definitely helped their fertility. Environmental assessment. So, you know, are you, are you is part of your problem that you're not clearing toxic estrogens? Are you using things in the environment that are actually contributing or are they endocrine disrupting hormones? What exercise is best for you? What, what fertility issues do we need to fix, particularly for men and their sperm and for you? You know, if you're not ovulating or your, your hormone levels aren't good enough or your progesterone isn't high enough, you're going to have problems with keeping that pregnancy. And I know it sounds crazy, but when should you start trying? So there are definite times of the cycle that you need to be aware of that is right for you and, and you're all very different. So when the time comes to start trying, then you've got to be able to, um, you know, really ensure that you're getting the best, um, the best time in your cycle. So if this resonates with you and you want to minimize your risk of miscarriage and increase your chances of falling pregnant, this is what I'd really like you to do. So what I've got for you is a brand new course that I've been working on. We've been developing this course over the last couple of years. We've added new information to this course that I've never re released before. And this MTHVR fertility course is going to help you prepare for pregnancy and minimize your miscarriage risk. We um, look at all the things that we need to support um, to ensure that you are preparing. And we take four months. So if you started today, and it doesn't matter how old you are, because you can see that some of my patients are well into their 40s, it does not matter. You cannot scrimp on those four months. You must take the four months to prepare. So what you'll get is um, all your workbooks, handouts, calendars, so that you can ensure exactly what your cycle looks like. I want you to also know that in the handouts, you, you've got this opportunity to keep all everything in the one place and really understand what's going on in your body. I don't want you to have to go to multiple doctors and multiple fertility people and multiple specialists to understand what's going on. You need to be aware and you need to gain an understanding of where you need help and what nutrients are high or low. The biggest gift I can give you is to empower you to understand what is going on for you. And it is really amazing how many of my students um, and people in the course have gained so much information and they will say to you, you know, this course has been amazing because I've learned more about my health in the time that I've done this than I have in my whole life. This information is not only great for me, but it's great for my whole family. So this is what you need. And you get videos. So you learn through videos, clear instructions. I talk to you every single day, what you want. You can do it at your own pace. You can, it's, eight modules, you can do it all in one hit, you can do one a week, you can do one a month, but you get emails from me telling me, telling you exactly what you need to do and when. So if you're a detail freak and you want all the info, go for it. 
If you just want top line and you don't want to know all the info inside the course, you get an email from me every week saying, okay, this, uh, these are the three things you need to do this week. So whether it doesn't matter which way you like to learn or which way you like to work, you can do it whichever way you can, whichever way you like to. And I want you to gain an understanding of how your genetics is affecting your fertility because you are not the same as the person next to you and your combinations of you and your partner will be completely different. And without this information, we don't want you to be here the same time next year saying the same things. It's actually not okay that you are having three, four, five, six miscarriages. It distresses me. It's not okay. So we need to stop it. We also have um, guests who have contributed to the program who have given very, very detailed videos to just to give you some more insightful information into why they believe either MTHFR is an issue or um, how your fertility can be improved. So it's quite exciting. It's an it's a amazing group of people. So to normally work with me, it's, it really is, um, I just have a ridiculously long wait list and I don't like that. And this is one of the reasons that I really wanted to do the course because I'm only one person and I can only really in the clinic see one person at a time. But there are millions, as you saw, there are 70 million people who have a problem with fertility. And therefore, I don't want you to have to go to IVF. I mean, look at that. The average person now is put, more and more people are being pushed into IVF. The average price is six to 10,000 a session. And the average cycle, most people will fall pregnant somewhere between three and six cycles. So it could cost you up to $60,000, which is, is crazy, particularly when it's only got less than a 30% um, success rate. So I really wanted to make this course available so I can help more people more than I can just seeing one person at a time. And in the highly unlikely chance, you're not 100% happy with the course in the first 30 days. And if you can show me that you have actually implemented the changes and you have um, put all the practices in place that we want you to do for preparation, um, and you don't like the course in the first 30 days, I promise to give you your money back, no questions asked. Um, so yes, um, the course will be very helpful for you because it will actually help you understand how all these other genes are actually affecting you. And that's really important. And that TCN2, super, super important for you, Emma, and probably one of the reasons you're having miscarriages. T. Grant, I've had, I have the two MTHFR genes and Crohn's disease. Um, will this course take everything into consideration? Yes, it will. And don't forget, you've got me in the live sessions. Oh, T. Grant purchased the class. Fantastic. Well, welcome. Really look forward to having you. Um, can you post the email for Emma? Yes, I'll put it here. I'll just send it to... All everyone. So for the practitioner course, it's Emma at mthfrsupport.com.au. All right. So for those of you that have got the into the course, fantastic. Look forward to seeing you next Friday. Um, you will find a whole lot of information. Um, uh, okay. So sorry to. Um, you don't have the autoimmune lupus, but you have the anticoagulant. Okay, great. Yep. So, um, so that you definitely, if you were not on the Lene, if you were not on um, uh, um, anticoagulants um, through that pregnancy, you definitely need to be, and we need to keep a very, very close eye on your homocysteine levels. Um, definitely, really important for you. Um, so Nicole said she was on elevated B12, but she was put on supplement before. Oh, okay. Yes. So that means that you are not absorbing your B12 and supplements are not the thing for you. You need the injections and that's something we can help you with and prescribe within the course. So 
think of the course as um, having me as your practitioner, but you're doing it in a group environment. Lindsay, I have two healthy kids. I've had six miscarriages, five of them after giving birth to my two healthy. Two of those miscarriages, whether in the second, at 18 and 20 weeks, what kind, kind of advice? So in the, when you have um, a miscarriage in that latter time, then that's um, incredibly important and you really need to look at your clotting. You need to very closely look at homocysteine and I would suggest that you probably have other polymorphisms that are affecting the placenta, like the AGT gene definitely does affect um, the antioxidants and the flow of nutrients through the placenta. And if you're having it in second, third or fourth trimesters, any miscarriages, then that's a different strategy that we need to support you with. Um, so that's really important enough um, important and probably the first two healthy kids have sucked up all your folate because you compound heterozygous and your body has just been unable to um, catch up. All right, T Grant, thank you. Chloe, last question before we go. I have an 11 year old boy, then a miscarriage at 18 weeks, possible weak cervix, followed by a miscarriage at seven weeks, then a stillbirth at 27. You mentioned about Plexane and progesterone pes pessaries. I used progesterone for my last pregnancy. This was all before I discovered I'm heterozygous for the C67. What are your thoughts on using the Plexane and progesterone? I have no other health issues. So you had a miscarriage at seven weeks. So that was probably low folate. A stillbirth at 27 weeks, um, definitely you would need to see if your homocysteine levels were elevated and you need to support like we said with um, Lindsay, we need to support the health of the placenta and the nutrients going through the placenta. So we'd probably want to have a look at some other genetics that might be affecting you. So that's a good question, Chloe. And um, definitely think that the Clexane is a must for you and progesterone. But the thing, the thing is, if your DNA is not good because you're not having a good amount of folate, then you having progesterone is not necessarily going to help you because it's the DNA of the um, fetus that is the problem at that point. You still may have low progesterone and we've got to fix that, but that may not be your key issue. So thank you so much um, for Amy. Look forward to seeing you too. T Grant, look forward to seeing you. Can't wait. And thank you so much. And please pass this information on. We'll be having webinars every week. We need to spread the word that everybody who is having a miscarriage needs to know about MTHFR. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I look forward to seeing you all, hopefully in the not too distant future. I hope you enjoyed this and look forward to seeing you soon. Bye for now. And thanks again.